Hey everybody, welcome to the stream. Um, it's good to be here on a Thursday evening. Let's get transitioned over, but don't forget to do that like I did a couple days ago. Um, and, and right off the bat, I want to say um, welcome BMG Facts, um, BMG Facts YT. Um, you're my first YouTube subscriber from the stream. So thank you for that. Um, appreciate it a lot. Uh, it, it means a lot. Uh, thank you so much for joining and for uh, for subscribing. Um, and you know, um, make sure make sure uh, make sure to participate in the chat. Ask questions. Um, we're doing Angular with Analog today, uh, or Analog with Angular. I guess they're they're the same thing, right? Just before the stream, I was kind of dumb. Um, and I upgraded um, TypeScript to 5.4.2, um, and it's complaining at me. So if we go to um, angular.io and we go into the docs, right? Um, and here in the updates, not in here, roadmap, best practice, version compatibility. So here's our version compatibility guide. Um, we're actually on 17.2. It's not, um, is angular.dev up to date? 17.2 was released. Let's let's look for version compatibility. There we go. We're 17.1 also. But 17.1 and 17.2 um, don't support TypeScript 5.4. Um, so I wasn't paying attention as I was looking at stuff to upgrade. I didn't catch that I upgraded TypeScript. We'll go fix that. Um, probably the easiest way to do it is just to go here and take a look at what it was before. TypeScript was just locked at 5.3.3. So we'll do the same. Um, so we'll go ahead and open up our package.json. Wait for everything to catch up. <laughs> um. Oh, who's that saying hi? Joshua, whoa! Josh, welcome to the stream, man. Thank you for being here. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, what time is it in, are you in Australia or are you in, I think you're Australian, right? Um, what time is it there? I know it's, it's early, right? Like early in the morning, 9 a.m. I want to say. Um, but thank you for joining. Anyway, um, you'll make these kinds of mistakes every once in a while. Um, we'll go find our TypeScript. Where is my TypeScript in here? TypeScript. Find TypeScript. There it is. Just wasn't seeing it. So ooh, no, we want five three three. Um, so we'll go ahead and just you know save our package.json. Um. And we'll go back to PNPM and just say, hey, install it. You know what? Actually, let's do it with a no frozen lock file. Um, oh. oh, it wants me to type out install, doesn't it? There we go. So with the no frozen lock files, it's going to recreate the lock file instead of trying to use what I have. Um, with the 533 specifically, that probably shouldn't have caused an issue. Um, but 
now we can see, hey, we downgraded. Um, so now if we do a pnpm nx serve and serve our Angular blog, um, it should build. Um, and I did upgrade. Um, I did upgrade analog just before the stream. So we'll make sure. Hey, we're good. So there we go. Adelaide, 11 a.m. That's not as bad as I thought it would be. Um, so awesome. Welcome to the stream. Um, and, you know, for anybody, um, anybody here, um, Josh just put out a video that I watched the other day um, on, you know what, we're going to, we're going to plug your channel, Josh. Um, At Joshua, I don't go there straight from there, huh? We'll go find you. Um, okay, this is Josh. Um, amazing stuff. It, his latest one that he just came out with is um, like the mindset that you need to use as a declarative coder. Um, Around the time that all the signals and stuff came out, he had so much amazing content that was, you know, around the signals and all that stuff. You guys need to go watch his stuff. Um, I follow him. Um, I watch his stuff. And um, the, so on my Xbox, I don't sign into YouTube. <laughs> And I don't watch a lot of YouTube on my computer that I stream from um, just so that I don't pollute what's going on. But definitely go check out his video on uh, declarative coding. Um, he's got some funny graphics, and but he makes some really, really good points. Um, so definitely go check out Josh. Um, well worth your time. Um, and thank you for being here, man. Um, so anyway... Yeah, I've got an ad break coming up in five minutes. Let's see what we can break before then, right? Um, everything seems to be going well. I'm trying to remind myself. So I'm a little bit stuck on work right now, but um, we got this um, this animation working, um, and kind of the um, there's. There's this gradient at the bottom. It doesn't look good when we darken it. Um, I was trying to think like how I wanted to solve it. One thing I could do um, is we could extend it so that it goes all the way to the to both edges, and maybe that's the right thing to do. Um, but I don't want to get too stuck in that right now. Um, I also don't want to leave it on a light theme too long for you guys that are watching um, on your phones or in darker areas. So. Um, the next, the next piece to work on, right, are basically all the older articles. And I've got a ton of just space here, you know, to kind of help us with our layout. Um, I'd like to take the same treatment that we did here and apply it without the photo. Um, this should go pretty quick. Um, I'm also trying to decide what I want to do kind of with the, with the banner at the top. The welcome is kind of lame. Um, I haven't decided what I want to do there. I do know that we're going to do something similar here with the grow and shrink animation. Um, I, I really like that animation for some reason. That's why I keep doing it over and over again. Um, and um, let's, you know, let, let's build our smaller articles. So they're going to have a title like this. Um, they're going to have a date. Actually, you know what? We should clean up this date. Nobody cares about the time of day that the article was published. Um, really, they mainly care about, you know, the date itself. So let's go work with that. Um, and this will give us... You know, I was going to launch into that. Um, and I think I'm going to launch into it after we get this figured out because I'd like to do I'd like to do a solution for everything. Um, we're going to talk about um, proxies um, and why it's a good idea to proxy 
your date and time stuff. Um, and before I get into that, I would like to get all of this done. Um, so let's do that. Um, so our main article, um, we've, we've worked through that and that's all done. Um, we've got all of the stuff here that we want done. Um, let's look at our article container. Our, we've now got, you know, the main article, but now we want to provide articles themselves, right? Um, and we want them to, to flow across um, and the way that we're doing it now. Um, so, man, I've got a lot of tabs open. So we want them to flow across like this. Um, and, you know, as we get to a smaller size, um, one thing we, we should do is once we're to the phone size, um, we need to think about our, um, our responsiveness, right? Um, and so maybe that's the first thing we should solve is starting with a phone size. This is a bad experience. Do we solve this? Or do we show why it's a bad experience and then figure out where we want to make the good experience happen? We'll solve it after we get the articles. I'm, I'm very indecisive today. Um, <laughs> I had somebody at, um, at work today kind of laughing at me because um, I'm so indecisive today. And, <laughs> oh, you know what? I can't do that. I can't do that. Um, Self-closing tags in an analog file in analog um, don't work all the time. I was like, why didn't I use a self-closing tag? I just reminded myself. So let's uh, let's let's add um, the other articles. Um, hmm. We've got the container. We've got our main article. Um, let's add a new component. So a new file. Um, and we'll call this our secondary um, articles. Um, and this is an analog file. Um, and this is really all it takes to um, set up analog. Oh, I need my component. Um, so let's go ahead and rename this. Um, dot component dot analog. And there we go. So um really we're almost there and in fact i can just go here and i can just say hey let's let's throw a template in um and in our template we can just say um you know we'll, we'll throw in an h3 and we'll just say hello right um and that's all we need um now we can go back to our articles page or um Oh, this was a route. That was another route. I haven't even added that route in. Um, so here we've got the article container. Um, let's go find our article container. And this tells me, oh, it's right next to me. This tells me that we should close down a couple of things, right? Um, let's, let's get a bunch of these things closed. Don't need the header, don't need the home page, and we don't need the articles page. Um, just keep things a little bit smaller and easier. Um, so now if I if I just go in and I just do secondary article, um, that should add it. What I need to do is right here, and this was added actually by Josh, um, where this with analog was doing this by itself before. Um, now we need to tell it um, that we're importing secondary. Um, Copilot already picked it up, so um, you know we, we're grabbing our secondary article, we're grabbing it from the analog file, and we're telling it that it's an analog import. And 
that's all we need to do. So now we should see in our template um, a hello. And we do. We've got it right here with our H3. Um, and so that is the huge power of, um, of analog files, right? Um, I created an Angular template. Um, this is an Angular component. Um, and we, we imported it just like an Angular component. Um, and it, you know, it's got its selector and everything, but all of that stuff is derived from the name. Um, and then the stuff that we've got in it, right? We're gonna we're gonna do more than this. Um, so you know we're gonna um, we're gonna add this stuff in um, to the to the head. Um, so we need to add a script. Um, and we're gonna say lang equals ts. Um, and we need a closing script tag. There we go. And then here, this is not what we want. It's close, but for right now, we're going to, we're going to start with this. Um, so now if we go take a look, we can see there's our hello. Um, it looks very, very similar to all of our other content, right? To my blog, um, except we're using an H3 here instead of, this is probably an H1. Um, but, um, you know, now we're in the DOM, um, and working, uh, we're going to do something very, very similar to what we've done right here. And in fact, we can probably use most of this. Um, so the first thing we want to do is we want to make this a flex, um, and then we want to make it a flex column. Um, so now we've got our flex um, and we've got our border, which we're going to take off eventually anyway. Um, but by making this a flex, now we can add, you know what, let's, let's pull open our main article. Um, and really, we're going to add all of this stuff right here. So the title, um, and we can probably just take most of this here. So let's take that. Um, so there we go. So now we've got our title um, and all of that. We need to get our article in. Um, and this is where um, inputs come into play. Um, specifically, we're using um, we're using signals here. Um, we aren't going to be editing, so we aren't going to use a model input, but we we should use um, just a normal input. Um, so yeah. Um, so Josh, by the way, if you haven't seen the analog plugin for Web Store, it's available. I searched for it the other day. Um, I didn't find it. Um, so BMG Fax says, please help me. Um, what are you looking for, man? Um, so if I search for analog, I'm not finding it. Do you know what the, the plugin is listed under? Is it under Angular? Angular analog? No. Um. Oh, it didn't, it doesn't, no, YouTube blocks that, and it actually didn't show it to me. Um. Do you want to, do you want to send it to my Twitter and I can um, pull it up there? Um. Just DM me on Twitter. I'll grab it from there. Because I was looking for that the other day. It That is one of the plugins that I really want to get. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Um, but anyway, um, what we want to do is we want to say const. Um, and we want to say article equals. And here we want to say input. 
dot required. Um, and this is this article. So there we go. Um, so, and this is a cool thing about um, analog is, well, we need to import our um, input. So no, it's not from analog inputs. Come on, at angular slash core. Um, so there we go. So now our article has a required input on it. Um, and we don't have to add all the decorators and everything like that, right, with the input. Um, and so now article will have a title and a date and a content. Um, but we'll see, I should see, maybe it's maybe it'll show up in my console. Um, interesting. There we go. Um, the, we said, hey, article is required, but no value is available yet. Um, so we'll take that. Channel. I don't know what that means, um, BMG facts. Um, so um, it, it does recognize that input is required. Um, so we'll go over here and we need to create an article. Um, so here we can say, hey, our article um, equals, and for now, um, We'll do it using the um, article model. Um, so in the article model, we've got a function, and this function just creates a test article. Um, we'll do the same for right now, just, just for our test. Um, and then we're going to create an array of test articles, right? Um, so up here, um, we just need to import. Um, and we're going to import create um, test article. There we go. And here we can just say const article equals create test article. So there we go. Um, so now we're passing in. Nope, we didn't do that. So now we can pass in our article. And there we go. So now our secondary... <laughs> Our secondary article has our stuff in it. Um, so we're already in a pretty good place. Um, let me go check my Twitter because I really want that plugin. Thank you, Josh. Um, so there's Josh. Oh, yay. Um, let me log in. I'm, I'm always, I'm never certain. Um, what information it's going to show when I log in. Um, okay. We're logged in. We're safe now. Um, can I not? Not compatible with the version of your running IDE. What version of the IDE does this require? Does it tell um, plugin site? Let's go to the site. So here, um, one thing. I wish I could calm down the follow me on Twitter things. So. Um, Oh, hey, TVD Gamer. I, I haven't been watching my Twitch side. Um, thanks for the assistance the other day. Got signal. Awesome. That's amazing. I'm glad I was able to help you out, TVD Gamer. Um, and is the plugin on the EAP branch right now? Um, maybe. Oh, it needs the EAP version. 
Um, okay. Um, well, that is something I will be doing post stream. So I don't want to, I don't want to upgrade, um, to the EAP version midstream and then have to swap back to VS code. Um, so, um, I'll take a, take a look at that after, um, but thank you both for, for that information. Um, and I need to get. Need to get better at watching both chats. It's a little bit crazy having chats in both things. What what I've realized um, is I've been talking to uh, some other people who stream, and right now, if you look at my setup, um, you know what? Maybe we can move my camera. So um, here's my here's my laptop that I'm streaming off of, and then over there is my um, is my other monitor. Um, what I'm realizing is that I need another monitor that sits like right here um, that I can put my chat and other stuff on. Um, so um, I'm saving up my pennies so that I can get the monitor and stand that will sit above my laptop. Um, so that's that's the next thing. That should help me um, because then I can put um, Twitch chat and YouTube chat right by each other and I don't have to remember to look over the other monitor. But, you know, that's all... You got a prompter. That's amazing. Um, I did look at those prompters, but man, that's like nine hundred dollars for the one that. Um, so Yuri streams. Was it Yuri or who was telling me about their prompter? They'll got to. Oh, you were telling what? Yeah, you were you TBD gamer. You were telling me about the Elgato prompter. I'm jealous. Yeah, it sits around your webcam and looks amazing. Um, hey, Tooks, welcome to the stream, man. It's good to see you. Um, yeah, um, that that's one thing I need to I need to do. I probably two seventy nine. That's that's reasonable. I mean, that's that's the price of a good size monitor, right? Um, that's reasonable. And that's that's the crazy thing about streaming. Um, is once you start streaming, you've got to upgrade your internet. Then you start upgrading your equipment. Then you've got to upgrade your camera. Then you got to upgrade your microphone. Um, and um, you learn all sorts of crazy stuff about audio and all that stuff. And I'm sure it's the same with like YouTube. So if you want to start doing YouTube videos and stuff like that, you're probably getting into kind of that same... Um, that same cycle, um, but it it's a bit like um, when I was in college, I was a car guy for a bit, um, and so um, I got pretty big into like racing cars and stuff like that. It was a lot of fun, um, and like. You know, you're always on the lookout for that next upgrade to your stereo or the next upgrade to your engine or the next upgrade to your uh, to your interior or your lights or who knows what, right? Um, I kind of feel like s streaming scratches a bit of that itch for me because I'm always looking, up for the, looking out for that next gadget to upgrade. One of the things that I probably need to do is there are the um, streaming control panels that you can use to swap between scenes and stuff like that. I have to do it all manually. Um, but um, yeah, there's there's always always gonna be just crazy stuff. Brandon, welcome to the stream, man. It's good to have you here. Um, I, I I thought that that message for the EAP version was from Josh. No, it turns out it's from Brandon, one of the uh, one of the other analog maintainers. All we need is Chow to show up, and we've got like the three main. Um, the three main guys who who maintain analog. Um, there's a lot of amazing people that are helping though, that have done tons of crazy stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, Brandon Chow and and Josh um, have done a lot and put out a lot of content on analog. Um, so I really appreciate you guys and in your hard work um, and like so. Behind the scenes, um, and 
I don't think I'm special. So um, if I, I wouldn't be surprised if you guys get the same treatment, but if you like reach out to like um, Josh or Chow or um, Brandon with a legit idea, um, they're probably going to solve your problem for you. So um, a little while ago, um, Chow was showing me, um, you know, how uh, Ian Brandon hacked the Angular compiler to make analog files work with, um, with analog. And, you know, I asked, well, is that a way for me to get a hook into the Angular compiler to do silly stuff that I might want to do with the compiler? And Chow's like, no, nah, that's not going to happen. Um, and then a week later, um, Chow gets back to me. He's like, hey, you remember that question you asked me? You can do that now. So <laughs> they're uh, amazing people, and they, they have amazing ideas. It's a lot of fun to talk to them. Um, so uh, definitely show them your support, you know, um, and be kind on Twitter, please. Um, they're, they're out there giving you their time. Um, the least we can do is be kind. Let's, let's fix this up, right? Um, So we can get rid of this. Um, get rid of that part of it. Um, and so in our main article, um, What was I do? Did I do place item center? No, I didn't. Um, but if we look, if we refresh, um, and now it's not going to give me a shorter. Oh, it looks like it might be. Um, these random words are cracking me up, actually. Um, quarrelsome twine catamaran. That that would be fun to. Um, so here we can see that there's a little bit of centering, um, and maybe the easier way to do it is just instead of trying to rant. Um, you guys ever watch um, Futurama? Um, there's there's one of my favorite episodes where um, that's not the one we want to do. This one. There we go. So this one is shortening. Um, let's let's inspect this one. Uh, by the way, did I get yeah? So copying that over gave me that. Um, and if we go inspect this, and you know what? Let's slide this down so we can actually see what's going on. Um, so if we look at this title, it's huge. Um, a lot of words in there. Um, let's go give ourselves a short title. Okay, so it is centering. Um, that's cool. Um, we're probably... Well, well, we'll work on this a little bit here. What we don't have is we don't have the um, piece on the bottom that's giving the fade. Um, so we can definitely add that. Um, but let's see. Steam Deck. You've got a Steam Deck. Oh, Stream Deck, Stream Deck. I was like, Steam Deck. What, um, I was thinking like the little handheld that, um, you know, anytime a new game comes out on Steam, everybody's like, yeah, does it support the Steam Deck? Um, Stream Deck, that sounds amazing. See, TBD Gamers got all the cool stuff. You got a Steam Deck too. I like gadgets. Um, I thought about getting a Steam Deck. Um, I may get a Steam Deck uh, just because I'm going to be doing a bit more traveling. Um, and it would be nice to have um something to like play games on the plane or in the hotel room or stuff like that um so um working on a new project at work and that project is uh, going to require a little bit of travel here shortly so um one thing to do let's um 
Let's go mobile and flip this sideways. Um, well, that's hideous. That's really hideous. Um, so we're going to need to fix that too. Um, but I wanted to take a look at this, you know, this piece right here that um, causes the, basically the fade out effect, right? Um, and we can see that in the main article. Um, oh, that's interesting. It's there. I copied this, so it's probably there. I wonder what I'm doing wrong. So let's go take a look and see if we can find it. Um, it should be here at the bottom. So if we go take a look at this class, right? Inside of here, we've got that. We've got this. We've got this, and then we've got, oh, it's right there. It's right here. Um, okay, one thing we've got a problem with is um, we don't want, we want this stuff to go all the way to the side. We don't want these, um, the side margin that we're getting here. And I think that comes from here, it does. So we've got side margins here. We don't need them because we've got gaps and we're not gonna be adding gaps here that we'd want to include over here. So we'll clean that up. Um, what's interesting to me is right here, um, we've got this div. Oh, it's got the main article gradient. Um, we didn't copy this class over. Um, so we're going to call this just our article gradient. Um, and we're going to need, oh, let's not break this, this one, right? Um, so here is the gradient that we're looking for. Um, um, and then we also want this piece here. Um, so this is our um, this is our container query that says, hey, if our height is below a certain size, um, then we shorten the gradient. We're going to probably want to tweak these a bit um, just because we're using a smaller gradient, but we can just add our styles here um, and just paste this in. And this is the nice thing about um, just about analog in general is... Where did I get that extra? I must have copied that. Um, so there we go. We've got these and that and that. Um, so, oh, it's just style. I always get it wrong. Just style. There we go. Um, so we're good. Um, so that's going to add in our gradient. What do we have a problem with here? Oh, I did need that. Dang it. There we go. Okay, that should have added. Main article gradient. Um, let's just go article gradient here. Go article gradient here. Um, and then main blurb. Did we call this main blurb? Um, I should have a container here too. I'm missing another style. Yeah, so this right here that we're calling the main article blurb, um, I didn't copy that over either. Um, 
So let's go ahead and grab that. That's part of the problem with copying. Um, one of the things we could probably do to clean this up, um, let's, is um, we could probably extract this. Um, for right now, this, this is our article blurb. And we will call this just our blurb container. Um, so now we've told our article blurb, but we need to templates. So here, this is our article blurb, our article gradient. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to allow the container query to work. Um, so with the container query, we have to tell the container what it's measuring. Our container only cares about size. Um, and then we're going to give it a name so that we can, in our query, we can say, hey, we want to watch this query exactly. Um, and we're, we're, we're looking for a certain height. Um, so TBD Gamer, when you're creating stores, is it a practice to align a single store to an object? I have a store for planning items and a planning item has an assigned user. I created a second store for users, but when I'm showing planning items, my item would need to have the ID and name of the assigned user. Are there any good guidelines on how to align stores? Um, I don't align stores to models. Um, I mean, sometimes that works out. But typically, I try to align my stores to the component tree that I'm attaching them to. Um, so in your case, um, you, you have a planning item store um, and a user item store, um, and that's fine. Um, my suggestion would be, instead of doing a planning item store and a user item store, do a planning item store feature, right? You're using signal store, right? I believe. Are you using signal store or component store? I forget. Um, signal, okay. With signal store, we can do um, signal features, right? Um, and so if we go to ngrx.io, um, and they've got the docs up now. And um, if we go look at the um, NGRX signals right here, and we go look at signal store, um, there's this notion of custom store features. Um, and a few streams back, we looked into an article. So before the documentation was up, um, Manfred Steyer wrote a really good article. Um, and we can probably find it here. Can I change this theme? I thought there was a way to change the themes. I don't remember what it is. Um, no, that's just the organization settings. Um, I know there's a way to set the theme. There's a couple of things I don't want to set, check, click on. Um, but inside of here, is this article. And this is the article that I used from Manfred that goes over um, all sorts of really amazing things about the Signal Store. Um, I have the benefit of having worked in NGRX and Component Store and a lot of other things like that, right? Um, so, but one of the things that I would highly recommend looking into um, is, Custom features. With signal stores, what I would do in your case is I would have a custom feature built around um, your planning item and then a custom feature built around a user. Um, and then what you can do is you can create a store that needs both the user and the, um, the planning item. 
and you can tie them together in the store with your own features, right? Um, and we we did something very similar to this um, with the um, Angular Dinos. Um, so if we go to GitHub, and I'll give you a link to this. Um, so with the full stack Dinos, um, in our Angular Dinos, Dinos GraphQL, um, inside of this lib, we have our stores. Um, and so if you look at our stores right here, we've got a detail store. We've got the add with add dino store with call state store. I blatantly stole this from the article I just shared with you from Manfred. So if you see that, this is blatantly stolen from there. Um, and I think Manfred in the article says he blatantly stole it from Marco. So I, I'm stealing from a thief. I feel justified in doing it. I'm kidding. Um, Marco came up with the idea and we're, we're propagating it, right? Um, but I do want to call out, this isn't my code. I, I took it and we tweaked it a bit, but um, the idea came from Marco through um, Manfred. Um, but the, the errors store is also something that we added and then the edit store, right? So these are our stores. If we look at the details store, um, you'll actually see that we're, we're doing something a little bit crazy. This was an experiment, but it turned out pretty well. Um, so we have two stores. We've got an edit dino store, right? Um, and we, we tell it, hey, we're going to use this edit dino state, and then we provide it with an empty state, right? We add the with call state. The with call state adds the spinner and handlers like that. With errors allows us to handle errors from the dinosaur object or things like that. And then we've got our own custom store with edit dino. Um, we could also add, you know, with methods, right? We could just very similar. Oh, I, I'm trying to edit here <laughs> in GitHub, um, but we could very easily just add a with methods um, or, you know, with computed or anything like that. Um, after this and we can interact with all of these um, and that's the cool thing about the signal store is as we add these so with edit dino is aware of errors and call state and it's aware of the base state um, you know with add dino is aware of everything above it um, and then we do something crazy um, i'm going to give you this link um, yeah so this is um but you know, if we go look at the with edit dino, it's very specific to the dinosaur itself. Um, so it, you know, we, we set up a signal store feature. So to set up a custom feature, it's really easy. You just create a function that returns a signal store feature. And that's really it. And then signal store features wind up looking just like mini stores. So you tell it, hey, this is the state. <clears throat> And depending on where you want it to sit in the, um, you may have to add other stuff if you want it to be aware of other pieces of state. If you don't, then, you know, um, you don't have to worry about this kind of stuff, but you might have to do something like this. I wanted it to be aware of call state and I wanted it to be aware of errors. Um, so, you know, we, we set it up a little bit differently um, and it's aware of the state. Um, but then inside of here, right, we're adding computeds. Um, we're adding with methods, right? Um, and the cool thing about this is, you know, we've got this save method that we put in our state, right? So we, we've got edit mode, open AI mode. We got the ability to set the ID. Here's our save method. Um, then we've got an open AI model stuff that we're doing here too. Um, but you will see inside of here, That like with our save um, method, um, that we we update the dino errors. This actually comes from the. This is a, a method that we export from here. Um, so we're returning a method that knows how to update this slice of state, um, and so in our edit dino store. When we look at it here um, in our save method, um, you know, we, we can set the errors to be what, you know, what they need to be. Um, and then we also 
set loading in here. Um, we could say, hey, it loaded um, and all of this stuff, right? So we can update our spinners and everything from inside of here. And that's the way I suggest that you compose your state. So target your state to your, your tree, but target your features to your models is, is my suggestion. And Brandon is in YouTube. And if Brandon disagrees, I am happy to pass along, you know, what he says. It should show up on the screen, right? But, um, uh, and that, that's kind of the approach I'm taking. And, you know, um, Josh has a lot of experience with this kind of stuff too. Um, and in fact, um, you should also go check out Brandon's Twitch channel um, and Brandon's YouTube. He goes over a lot of the same stuff um, and does a really good idea, a really good job of it. Josh went over a lot of the same stuff too. Um, and so a lot of my, my ideas that I'm sharing on stream come from a lot of other people in the community. Um, Mark was amazing. Um, Mark was one of the, um, one of the guys behind component store and now signal store. Um, you've got, you know, um, Manfred, Manfred is amazing. Um, and, um, angular architects is a great resource. Um, you know, you've got Brandon, you've got Josh, you've got, um, and there's so many people. I hate naming names because I know I'm going to leave somebody out. Um, but, um, you know, those four are top of mind because um, we're, we're talking about them right now. But that, that's my suggestion, TBD Gamer, and I hope that helps. Um, so, yeah, a um, little bit, little bit deep, but let's figure out what's going on with my... So it's right here. Um, so we can see that that div is there, but what's going on? So it's got a min width of 100. Um, and I can't. So it, it's got that. It's got a min height. Um, and if we turn that off, it just collapses. So. Um, a max height you know what let's let's give this thing a border um we'll go one pixel solid um and we'll go um i think we could do bright green that's not gonna work that's okay we can do an hsl um <clears throat> Green is 120 degrees. Um, we're going to give it like 90% saturation and we'll give it like 90% lightness. Yeah, that's a pretty bright green. Um, but that's not going to show up. So let's go 240 and go bl bright blue. Um, let's take that saturation down just a bit and maybe we'll go two pixels here. So there we go. We've got a bright blue. This is the... Um, this is the div that we're trying to see what's going on with our gradient. Um, the Z index is 10. That's fine. Um, the left is zero pixels. The bottom, see if we take the bottom, then it disappears. So where did that actually go? Oh, wait. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Um, oh, never mind. <laughs> uh, I was like, oh no, it's not doing my it's not doing my um, CSS encapsulation. It absolutely is. This is a tailwind class, and so when I uncheck that, of course, it's going to change up here. Um, <laughs> and then my position absolute right forces it to be there. Um, what I'm not getting is the gradient. Um, so if we go inspect this one here and we look at this div, um, oh, the main article gradient. So we didn't copy the gradient. Um, There it is. Did we just not rename it? There's article gradient. 
here, article gradient. We gave it a linear gradient. Article dash gradient. That's interesting that it's not picking that up. Um, let's just try restarting. Um, so I'm, I'm running analog on Windows, um, and analog can have some problems on Windows sometimes. Um, I saw that there recently were a bunch of um, fixes put in for Windows. Oh, look at that. What is going on here? CSS syntax error. Height 20 does not exist in your theme config. Oh, wait, what? Oh, it pasted it in with a space. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Did it do the same up here? No. Do I have that same space over here? No. So part of my issue might just be copy pasting problems. Let's see if that solves my issue. Um, so there we go, we've got this and we still don't have our gradient on it. So it is article gradient. It is absolute bottom left. Um, but it's not picking up my CSS from here. Did I do something special? Did I put this all inside of a host? Oh. Does that really make a difference? Interesting. So if I go host on this, does that make a difference? Um, and that's fun that it decided to pull this one back. Um, I definitely want to get that plug in. Um, so, oh, look at that. It did it again. It might be a reformatting thing that's adding that. Um... Um, that doesn't need to be that. There's my article gradient. And it's changing colors because it sees it here. Oh, you know what? I wonder... No, that doesn't make sense. It should, like... This container query shouldn't be affecting things. And it's not. Um, there's something else going on here. Um, because my cursor is wrong. Um, so it's also not getting my mouse events none, or pointer events none. Um, article gradient. Let's go back. So, like this div, Um, that we've, we're looking at right here. 
has an ng content of this. We don't need the host on this. Um, at least I don't think we should. Um, and that can go back to being article gradient, article dash blurb. Um, so yeah, we renamed that to blurb. Um, So this flex We've got an extra space here. Um divided by zero percent. Not oh, you know what? We've got problems here. So it's it's reformatting things. Um, and that reformatting is leading to inconsistent handling of the CSS um, because, well, let me look. No, I'm wrong. Am I wrong? Yeah, I'm wrong because these are working. I'm completely wrong. Um, and in fact, me doing that looks like it broke some stuff. Um, if we go look at the console. No. Um. There's my secondary article. Um, there's my flex. There's that div. There's that div. And inside of this div, we've got that and um, this. So I completely broke it with what I did. Um, how did I break that? So this is at 0%. And so we're using a linear gradient. We're going from the base color at 0% to 50%. Um, and then here we're going from 20% to 85%. Um, So we've got the background with the article gradient. And when we hover over this, that works. The article blurb works. Does me changing that um, now I've really broken something. Go back and take a look, see where things are. So if we go take a look here. So we've got our secondary article, it's showing up. We've got this div for the title, it's there. We've got this div for the date and it is there. Um, well, actually we've got that div for the date, right? This is the, this is the div that holds everything. Um, and we're allowing this one to shrink. So what if 
here we just added the flex one oh look at that and now we've got our gradient in there too um And so now if we if we shrink this a bit, um, it's difficult to see. Um, so let's go here and let's go a little bit darker on our gradient. So on the default gradient, we'll go from um, 30% or uh, it's not 30%, 30% to um, 80%. Um, and this gradient will go from 50% um, to 85%. That should be fine. Um, oh, and I forgot to add the, the flex one um, that allows this container to grow because the other could oh that's the thing the other container was um it was a grid container um and so this container um isn't a grid it's a it's a flex within a flex um and actually, that is our problem. We can take that out. We don't need that. And that out. And it should behave the same way. Um, I don't need to nest that flex. Um, so there we go. Yeah, that fixed it. Um, so now we've got stuff there and I'm I'm looking there's one that's not as harsh and I always forget so dim that looks actually kind of crazy um oh well, that is bright sorry about that that is even brighter man I don't know we'll we'll stick with some dark themes here but we can see we can see that we're getting the effect, and as we shrink it, um, all that div is going away. So it doesn't even make any sense um, as we shrink that. Um, we need to <laughs> uh, we need to fix our um, side to side stuff, right? Um, so we can do that. Um, that's in the main article. No, it's not. It's in the article container. So our article container has grid rows, auto rows. Um, so auto rows at 20. So we've got grid calls to grid rows 33, auto rows 20. This is the part we want right here. We want this to be MD only. Um, we only want two columns at medium. Um, and that should fix this up. Yeah. Um, so now we've got, well, now it's going way off the side. Um, and the reason for that is that um, I need to go call one. Um, so we can just do grid calls one, and that's going to set up just one column, um, and that will constrain it. Um, no. Auto rows gap. So I've got grid. With grid calls two. Oh, this is the problem right here. This needs to be MD call span two. So at medium size, it spans two columns because there will be two columns. 
Otherwise, it only spans one. And there we go. So now we're down to one. Um, and we're only ever going to get the one. Um, well, that's not true. We can we can fix that. So secondary article here. Um, we've got this gradient, and here we're saying at twenty. Um, let's take it down to twelve. So a height twelve. Um, we'll set the height to that, um, and then here. Um, instead of doing min height 14, max height 14, um, we'll call this 12 and 12. Um, and we actually do, yeah, we do need the Z index because we want it to show on top. Um, but here we can we can make this 14 and 14. Um, so it's just a little bit bigger. So there's a transitional period. Um, so now it's never going to get bigger than that. Um, if I inspect this, how big is it? This div has a height of 5 rem. Where does that height come from? That's the container. Um, So we've got a min height of 5 rem, setting the height to 5 rem. We don't want it to be that big. So 14 is 3.5. Um, And this is kind of the, the tricky stuff that you get into, right? Um, so what if we set this to be 8 and 8? Um, and here we'll set this to be like 10 and this height to be 10. Um, and so if the container has a minimum height of 10, Oh, 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 what am I doing here? That's kind of funny. Oh, never mind. I'm putting the blurb. I put the blurb on the... Um, I put it in the wrong place. Um... We're setting that to be the entire height in the case that that's interesting. Um, is that really the entire height? So if we go here and we look at our div, um, no, it's not the entire height. Um, because we haven't even hit that container query. It's always been this height. Um, and in fact, if I turn that off, how big does that become? Oh, no, never mind. It did. It did hit the min height of 5 rem. 
Um, that is 5rem right there. Is that really 5rem height? If we turn that off, then it gets it from 14, which is 3.5. So it has to have at least 5 rem. Oh, this needs to be min height. Min dash height. There we go. And here, this, there we go. Um, so now we can see, I don't know if you guys can see that, but um, So we've got a minimum height of 3.5 rem on that, or 5 rem. Um, we probably don't want it to be that tall. Um, we could probably call this like height 16 um, instead of the height that we had up above. Um, but height 20 is too high. Um, the secondary article, we're going height 10. Um, so if it's got a minimum height of 10, um, you know what, we're not going to mess with that height. Well, yeah, we can. Um, and here we're going to go back to 0 to 50, um, because now we know it works. Um, so now we've got a height of 10, and here we can go back to 20 to 80. Um, so we can say, hey, if the minimum height is 12, which is whatever that is in REM, uh, the styling is definitely not your forte. Styling, <laughs> styling can be tough. Um, and, but it's also something that I enjoy. Um, one of the things that I think I would do in the future um, is probably not use, um, not use Tailwind. Um, that's where this stuff gets difficult, right? Because I don't know what height 12 really means, or height 10, right? Or even up here, um, we don't want the padding right on this at all, so we can take that off. Um, I'll spend one at medium. Call span two. That's broken too because we don't care. Um, I don't have two columns. Call span doesn't do anything here. Um, so that's fine. Um, and this is. You know, part of the reason why copying and pasting can be a little bit dangerous. Um, got our flex one. We're good here. Um, got our gradient. Um, we're saying that it's got a min height of eight. Um, but our gradient. Yeah, it's got a min height of eight. Um, if we are above a size 12 container, then we go to a height of 10. Um, so if we ever get below size 12, and that's, you know, kind of where this gets a little bit abstract. So if we look now, um, now we don't have the pointer events, which is good. That's a good sign. Um, so here, um, it has to be a minimum height of 3 rem. And if it's a minimum height of 3 rem, then we get into 2.5 rem. Um, which is two and a half lines, which should be fine. Um, we probably want our gradient to be a little bit stronger. 
Um, and we can probably go to like um, a slash, I don't know, call it like slash 40. Ooh, that's way too strong. 40% is not too strong though. So we can go to from 40% um, to like 95% probably. And that's probably a little bit better. Um, I'm curious if we go to like three rem. Um, how big are we at three rem? Yeah, I, I don't. So three rem is probably 12, maybe. Because we're saying this is a height 10. Um, and this, yeah, 12. So we could go 12 to 14. So go 14 here, 12 here. Or maybe even 16 here and 12 here. Um, and then we can go 45 to 80, right? Is that what we did? 40 to 95. 40 to 95. Um, and let's do that. So here we can go 16. Here we can go 12. Um, and then this goes from 45, 40 to 95%. Um, and here we probably want this to be a little bit stronger too. So we'll probably go 20 to um, 20 to like 70%. And if that's better. Um, so now if we go back and look, um, it's it's fading out a little bit better. Um, it becomes easier to see when we remove this border. Um, but um, yeah, let's let's remove that border, and it becomes easier to see what's going on. One thing I want to do though is go back to my mobile view. Um, and yeah, that, that's not bad. 20% um, at mobile view is probably not good. We could probably go 33 all the way down on mobile view. Um, so, well, and one thing that I haven't even taken into account is when we flip, that looks horrible, right? Um, and so, um, that looks really horrible. I need to figure that out. Um, but for right now, let's let's get this part cleaned up. Um, I think 33, 33, 33 is probably a good way to do it. Um, so we'll go 33% all the way down. So um, that's in the article container. Um, we've got grid calls one, medium we go to two columns. Grid rows 33%, auto rows 20%. Um, we're gonna call this medium and this medium. Um, and instead, we're going to go auto rows, um, and we'll go auto rows. We'll go three rows. Um, so that's going to get that's going to go one fraction for three rows. Um, and so now that's hideous um, because now it's going. Because it doesn't make sense what I did. So we're going to go auto rows 33% um, um, and we're going to have like a 1% at the bottom left over. Oh well, right. Um, and so now um, these are all the same size, um, which makes a lot more sense at this size. Um, when we flip, it looks a little bit better. Um,
Oh, that's hilarious. That is. Um, go to an iPhone. That's probably better. So on an iPhone, it's going to look like this. And when we flip, that's not bad. Um, if we look at an iPhone 12, um, again, oh, when we flip, it's big enough to, interesting. We might have to do a container query on the height um, because this doesn't look good, right? Um, And like the phone I have, the Pixel 7, um, it looks okay like this when we flip. Eh. So yeah. Um, and this is, you know, this is something that I don't know, it can get frustrating, right? Um, making sure that everything works out okay. And like if we go 800 pixels tall, um, we can just go 100%, right? Um, So there we are at that, at that size, at that size. Yeah, we're definitely gonna have to figure out our rotation, um, but I think we're better off now when they've got, they're holding their Bone straight up and down. Um, so let's take this border off. Um, and we can do that in our secondary here. Um, so there we go. So now um, I definitely took that off. There is no border. Do we have the border in here? No. Interesting. I wonder why that happened. What is going on here? So my article definitely just has a flex column and a flex grow. Um, if we go inspect this, we look, um, it's still got the border on it. It might not have picked it up. Um, uh, it's on the host metadata. That's that should be fine. That shouldn't matter. Um, like I know if if I go do this, um, and then we go restart it, it will probably fix it. Um, I've been questioning my choice that choice myself last week. Tailwind is a nice framework. There, there's just so much to understand, and that that is part of my problem with um, Tailwind right now um, is that it's abstracting, there we go. Without the border, um, it looks a lot better. Um, but yeah, Tailwind, my, my biggest issue with it is that, what does an eight mean, right? Eight is in relation to something else. Um, so they're, they're relative, um, they're relative scalers, I guess we could call them, right? Um, because they don't have a dimension to them. Um, so 
they're, they're, they're relative. And that's where it gets a little bit frustrating is um, because this is a four right here. These, you know, what's an eight, what's a 10, what's a, what's a 20, what's a 30, what's a 50. Um, and so there's just a little bit more cognitive overhead. Um, and it leads to confusion. So I, I agree with you, TBD Gamer. Um, there, I love Tailwind for how fast I can get things going, but sometimes maintaining Tailwind stuff can get a little bit frustrating. Um, so the next thing that we should do is figure out how to get the same effect, right? Where if we hover, it grows, and when we click on it, it shrinks like this. Um, and you'll notice that, well, it's harder to see here, but um, let me find a, the least offensive lighter. Um, Can we see, um, you can't really see the darkening that well. Here we go. So retro is a good one to use because it's a little bit solarized um, and hopefully that's easier on the eyes. Um, but when we hover, you can see that we're getting a bit of darkening around here. And that's what causes this gradient to show more, right? Um, one thing we could do with that gradient is in the main article, um, I think here we can just do um, margin um, and we can go, we want zero margin on the top, um, but then um, we want a negative um, how would we do that? I don't want to calculate that. Um, see, this is where, so if I go tailwindcss.com and in the docs, let's search for um, negative margin, using negative values in the margin. So, minus mt8. Um, so here, instead of doing the margin, um, what we can do is we can use the at apply. Um, and we can go at apply. Um, and here we can go negative uh, margin um, in the x direction. And here we're going to go with a 4, I believe it is. Um, and if we look at that, it doesn't like it. It really doesn't like it. Cannot determine entity type. Did I break a compile? No. Um, never mind. So let's look at this. Um, and does my div go all the way? No, it doesn't go all the way to the edge. Um, we said that retro was, yeah, it's still not going all the way to the edge. So my main article grade, um, this main article gradient should have, a mar it's got a margin of zero. Thank you. Um, so negative values are there. Um, so what if we do like tailwind um negative at apply so negative margin at apply how would we do it um, to apply negative margin in tailwind use a minus sign in front of the margin value 
So class equals that right. And we knew that. Um, but So we do have negative margin. And like if we if we look at tailwind, right, um, on the margin, um, so MX should go left and right. Um, and MY goes top and bottom. Um, And MX4 should be, uh, it's saying 16 pixels on each side, right? But um, so a negative MX4, so here's like my MX vertical negative values. This is giving me a negative margin top of eight, which puts it on top of the other one. Um, use MS and ME to set the margin inline start and margin inline end. So this is left to right or right to left. It's moving it back and forth, right? Um, And they're messing with the top, but um, if we look, functions and directives, at layer, at apply, um, Simply add important to the end of the decoration. See, and they're using padding here. So if you try to use, if you try to apply a custom class you've defined in your global CSS file, one of these style blocks should get an error about the class not existing. Um, they're processed separately. That's fine. Um, um, this is because that means if you have 10 components that have a style block, Tailwind is being run 10 separate times and each run has zero knowledge. Um, I didn't know that. That's crazy, too. Because um, Tailwind has no idea that the card... Does that mean... That's crazy. Um, so that line right there makes me wonder if you should use Tailwind in Angular. Um, is Tailwind being run for every component in Angular? Because you can use Tailwind in every component. So if you have like 300 components and you're using Tailwind, um, does that mean that you're running Tailwind 300 times? Um, that's something I don't know. That's something I should definitely look at. Any custom styles you want to add apply in your components using the plugin system instead. What is the plugin? Third party plugins. Or is my ad apply not working because I don't have stuff there?
So like right here, instead of using at apply the MX4, well, it, it's working kind of, right? If we go take a look and we look at this, so if I inspect this, um, this div, it's kind of working because if we take a look here, we're getting a margin of zero, but it's zero all the way around. Um, but really what we want is, um, I love, so Chrome is reinforcing um, I call it the trouble concept, right? Um, because that helps me remember the order. But um, when you use um, margin, um, it's top, right, bottom, left. Um, so that's why I call it trouble. Chrome is reinforcing that in the order that it shows it here. Um, and like good UX helps reinforce concepts without to dev subconsciously, right? Um, and then, you know, if you do only two, then it's top, the, the first one is top and bottom. The second one is right and left. So here, what we really want is we want zero and then we want negative one rem. Um, and so again, now we can see that our trouble's here, right? And if we go even further, if we go another negative one, um, then it's top and then left and right uh, is the way it works. So, oh, nope. Now it becomes top right. Oh, it goes top bottom. So this is negative two. Um, yeah. So it goes top bottom, left, right, or joined together. Um, see, I even get that one wrong. Um, but at negative one rem, does that do what we expect it to do. Um, so if we go hover over, there we go. Um, but so <laughs> this has to be actually be zero, zero, negative one, negative two rem. Um, is that right? Um, top. This, it needs to be negative one. Is that's, no, nope, nope, nope. Um, it needs to be negative two rem here. Um, and this needs to be zero. I'm not even following what I was telling you guys, right? Um, because it's, it's trouble. So top, right, bottom, left. Um, whoops, there we go. So now if we look and we hover, so our right is right up against the picture where we want it to be. Um, but our gradient is not there. Um, and our, or our left is right up against the picture where we want it to be. Our right is still not our right, we probably need to go further. Um, so we need to go with this one. Um, and, and let's let's make it easy to see. So we'll go border um, one pixel solid. Um, and we'll do um, green. Now let's do um, pink. No, that doesn't show up. Um, blue. Blue usually shows up. Um, so we can see um, 
That's fine. So if we hover over this um, at 4 rem, it's not extending past our So even at negative 16 rem, we're still, we, we aren't moving this. Um, because we're inside of a relative, uh, um, that's the problem. We're absolute positioned inside of a relative div. Um, so even with these margins, it's it's not going to do. And actually, why did my margins shrink here? Um, oh, it's not shrinking. It's moving. Um, so like if we do um, margin left, uh, negative one rem, um, and then margin right, negative 12 rem, um, we'll see that it's not really um, resizing it the way we expect. Like the negative one is fine, but um, it's actually moving the um, but I think we've got a max width of full on this. Um, Max height, left, bottom, absolute. Um, so we've got a min with full. Um, I'll bet if we put like um, min with um, two hundred percent. Um, yeah. The now. Now we're way bigger. Um. But because our overflow is hidden, we're not going to make it outside of, um. This div right here. This div is constraining us. Um, because this div has the overflow hidden on it. Um, it also should have the, no, this div has the relative. Um, yeah, this, this div has the relative on it. Um, and I'll bet if we take that relative off, nope, the overflow hidden, right? Um, yeah. Um, and actually, if we take that overflow hidden off, um, it helps. Um, so, what we could do is we could go overflow dash y hidden. Um, and now we wind up with this ugly mess, right? Um, and then we can go overflow dash x. Um, and here we can just say we want to clip it. Um, and we're making it further, um, but we're still even um at this level see we're still outside of the bounds but we're still bounded to here 
Um, so all of that is to say, I need a better solution. Um, I don't think I'm going to solve it now. Um, but let's, let's get the um, hover effect going on. Um, and that will probably wrap us up. We'll, we'll come back and talk about, um, we'll talk about proxy, uh, um, not proxies, facades, and, and date time handling um, next time on Sunday. Um, but let's, let's get this hover effect in here. Um, and the hover effect um, comes in on, well, it's, it's in the styles.scss. Um, so we've got this cover mix in, um, and we're calling it darken article. Um, and that's what's adding the extra colors here. Um, so we can do this and then, um, so if we look on the, um, here we've got a couple of things here. We've got this stuff that we want to add to ours also. We want to add the darken article. Um, and we want to add the cursor pointer. Um, so here we'll just add the same. Um, but that's going to do something different. Actually, that's not working. What did I do wrong here? Did it not pick that up? It's like it's not picking up changes to that secondary article for some reason. Um, let's try that again. Let's try serving it again. Um, and so the metadata, it's not picking that up and recompiling it. It's also crazy to me that it's complaining about this um, nested stuff. Um, because this isn't really nested. Um, and I'm not sure why it thinks it is. Um, but yeah. So we've got a similar thing going on here. Um, but I would like these to get this secondary color and not the primary color. Um, so to do that, um, oh no, it is doing secondary there. I think that's a tertiary color. Um, what are we calling that? It's the accent color. Um, so here we can we can do um, dot darken article. Um, accent, and here we can just do the hover again. Um, and let's see what it's picking up here. So yeah, we want the black, we want that, and we want that, and we want that, and we're good. <clears throat> so now if we go look, I need to change the class, which means I'm probably going to have to restart. So. <clears throat> Here we can go darken article accent. Um, and there we go. <clears throat> um, so now we're getting different colors. We're getting the, the click effect. Um, and then if we go to retro, um, you know, we can see we're getting different colors also with the text highlighting. Um, interesting, this one goes all the way across, um, but it, it still shows up a bit. It's a little bit less noticeable than this one. Um, to make it work, what I would probably have to do is make this 
owned by the outer container and then position it. Um, and maybe we'll do that, but right now, um, I don't know. That's not bad. Um, the crazy thing is, is that like this effect doesn't happen on a phone. Um, so if we go to like the iPhone 12 um, and we unflip it, right? Um, you don't have a hover effect on the phone. So we've got a tap event here. Um, and, you know, as we scroll, we don't get that. It's only when we click on it. Um, why am I getting that event on both? <laughs> That's hilarious. So there we go. If I click, oh, it's when I unclick. That's a strange effect. Um, we don't get that. So when the mouse goes out, we lose the hover. Um, but we don't really have a hover effect on um, that might is Tailwind not set up for touch events? So like if I search for touch utilities for controlling how an element can be scrolled and zoomed on touch screens using the touch action, touch auto. Touch none, so touch pan. Additionally, apply classes in different states. For example, use touch and X to only apply touch pan utility on focus. Um, but you don't really have like hover in in the touch world. Um, and I, I think that's what's going on here. Um, so when we're in this mode, um, it's growing it to the hundred and five percent when we let go of the touch. Um, we can we can see why, right? Um, if we inspect here um, and we look at the article itself, um, so here. Um, we can see what classes. So active, like hover. So when it's active, it shrinks. Um, we don't really have a hover effect. Um, I'm trying to see what is causing. So we, we're getting the hover effect here. And that's the crazy thing. I don't know why the... If I click here, we lose that hover effect. What state is on here that's causing that hover effect? Um, is it, it is this hover class that gives it the scale. 
Um, and we can see that, you know, if we turn that off, it goes back to where it should be in the transform. Um, if we turn that transform off, so it is the hover dot hover class. Where are we getting that dot hover from? That being added. So here, darken article, trans hover scale, active hover, scale 95. Like if I, if I look at this right here and we go to the main article, um, we've got our dot transition stuff there. Um, but we don't have any hover classes set. Um, as soon as I touch it, um, I'm not seeing, if I click on this again, oh, it's up above. Um, let's, let's refresh that. Let's query this again. Let's go grab that class. Oh no, it's there. It's still there. Wait, why is that? On, didn't I refresh? I click out. Oh, now it's always on. Why is that always on? What did I do? What did I do? This main article right here. So if we refresh, I clicked on it, didn't I? That's what causes it. So here, our main article does not have the hover on it. As soon as I click, um, That hover is added. It's adding that dot hover class to it. Um, I'm curious. So if I refresh and we query, say this. Um, so we've got our grid template and all of that. Um, as soon as I click here and we click out and we come back, um, I don't see that hover class. So it's applied there and as soon as I take it off, it's taken off. Um, And there's my active hover scale, hover active. So is that how... Hmm. Because I'm not adding that hover class anywhere, but I'm using Tailwind. Does Tailwind add that dot hover class? Is that where that's coming from? Um, so like if I turn hover on, that is coming from styles.scss. If we pop this out, 
Uh, or styles.css. Um, and that was coming in on um, 2295. So this is the class right here, hover scale hover. There is this dot hover scale hover class. Where does this come from? Um, let's search in here for dot hover. There's only one place where that exists. Hover. A lot of places where that exists. So if it supports hovering, um, we've got mix-ins around stuff. So this is our stuff that we added here. Um, and then again, they're doing some hover stuff here. Uh, background color. Um, How is that class getting added? Um, that's what I'm curious about is where does that class come from? And that's, that's something that I probably need to learn better. Um, um, What did I do here? Deprecated feature use. Oh, yeah. Um, and that's that's a good error to know, too. Um, Right. Hmm. I still don't know how this is being applied. Is that just a browser thing that when you hover, it adds that class? That doesn't make sense because this class has scale and hover on it also. Um, 300 times, yeah. It would be awful, and it was awful. Interesting. I need to learn more about this, why that works, um, because I'm very bothered by this effect. Right? And then as soon as I touch anywhere outside of there, so like if I touch here, we're fine. But for whatever reason, it thinks we're in a hover state. Um, and so, you know, if we add the hover state here, it grows like that. Um, what's interesting is that my hover state isn't adding the color. It's, it's only adding the scale portion of the hover state. Um, so if we turn this off and we turn the hover on, um, we're getting that color. And this is where that's coming from. Um, so we're getting this, we're getting this media query too, right? We support hover and we support color mixing. Um, as soon as we go here, um, we aren't getting that media query. And it, it might be that these browsers, it thinks the browsers don't support the color query. Um, 
I don't know. And it's also emulating. Um, it's also emulating phones here, so um, it's hard to know, you know, what's going on. Um, yeah, as soon as we turn that off, um, I don't know. Um, but it's a good place for me to end today. We've got, well, you know what? I want to do one more thing. I want to get a bunch of blog posts here um, that aren't just my blog, my blog, my blog. So we'll do one last thing. Um, and we're going to do it here in the article container. Eventually, we're going to, um, we're going to do, um, we'll do this from like an API or something. Um, but for right now, we're going to do, um, it this way um, and what we can do is um, let's say we want a random number of test articles um, and did we add we did add faker right if I go take a look at this um, yeah we've got faker um, so we could do it with like a, a random number generator um, but faker makes it easier to read um, so here, you can do an array dot from anything that has a length on it. Um, so we just give it an object, and we can say, hey, let's create an array from, and here we can say faker um, dot, um, and let's import faker, import faker from faker, um, and it should be JS. No, that is the wrong import. Oh no, it is faker JS slash faker. So um and we'll take this out eventually. This this is just testing stuff for us to set up, right? Um so here now we can say faker dot um integer. I think we have to do number dot int, yeah. And here we can say the number we want. So let's say um, we want, and we have to give it the options. Um, we'll say min. We want a minimum of five. And we'll say we want a maximum of fifteen, um, or we'll we'll say twelve, right? Um, and then the next thing we do is we just pass it a function that we want to run for every item in the array. Um, and so now we've created an array of articles. Um, and so the next thing we can do um, is we can come down here and we can say um, for um, article of articles. Um, and we have to provide a track, right? Track. Um, and we can just say article.id. Um, so there we go. And then we put it around this. Um, uh, there we go. And now we've got our articles. Um, and that should work. Now, if we go take a look, there we go. So now we've got a random number of articles coming in. They're showing up as we would expect them to. Um, and if we go down to phone, um, we can see that our articles look the way we would expect them to. Um, as we flip it, though, um, you know, let's go to an iPhone 14, flip it. That actually doesn't look bad. I'm not too concerned about that. Um, I am a little bit frustrated by the way these things move when we do this, but um, I guess it is what it is. Um, when we flip it back, these all look good. It's, it's interesting that the iPhone 14 is big enough that we get the image. Um, if we go to a 12 Pro and we flip, do we get it? Yep. Um, Pixel 7, we do. 
Um, the SE, if we flip it? No. The SE is small enough that we don't get it, but this doesn't look bad. Now we've removed the borders and things. I'm okay with this. Um, and so, you know, we can see the articles. Um, one thing that's interesting is how this one stands out. Um, because of the centered title. Um, that's interesting. And we don't get it this way. Um, very interesting. Um, and the cool thing is, is that as we refresh this, right, this time we only got five articles. Um, and if we go flip it and Scroll, not bad. Pixel 7, we get the image and then these articles here. It's crazy that the Pixel 7 has enough pixels side to side, but um, yeah. So we're in a good place. Um, we're, we're at a place where um, we just want to make fixes to like the date and time. Um, And once we, you know, once we get that done, then the next thing to do, um, actually, let's let's go look at retro again, and that is bright, but um, um, maybe darkening the background isn't the right way to go. So what if we take these out? And that will solve that will solve our overlay. Um, that will solve a lot of issues. Um, so now if we refresh this, um, are we still getting the darkening on the no? You know what? I don't think we need the darkening of the background. Um, it's fairly obvious when you hover, like in your browser, um, that you're selecting this article, right? Um, so the the background darkening, and if we remove that, then it doesn't matter that this gradient doesn't go all the way to the sides. Um, and so, you know, if we pick yeah. You know what? I'm fine with this. It actually doesn't bother me at all. Um, I, I prefer this. Um, so that's one way to do it. Um, that's janky. I've been doing the bare minimum of UI to try and move forward because I know all this stuff is going to take serious time once I get functionality in there. Focus more on the code aspect. This is me. This is making me consider just how much styling and UI I've got coming in the next few months on my project. Yeah, that's so. One thing I recommend um, is, you know, you you may not need to focus as much on your UI, um, like styling and stuff early on, but you should be considering it because decisions you make now can make your styling more difficult in the future. Um, so definitely keep styling in mind, um, and, you know, take some time, even if you're not styling, take some time to look at your stuff at a phone size, right? Um, see what it does once you get into, you know, different responsive sizes. Um, and if you're not going to do phone size, right, take a look at your other breakpoints and just make sure that your breakpoints make sense. 
Um, and the what you're doing with your CSS makes more sense um, because it's easy to paint yourself into a corner um, and wind up with bad solutions. The other thing to think about, um, and um, this is something like with a new project I'm working on at work that um, we talk about quite a bit, um, a lot of times companies only provide a light theme. Um, but most people tend to prefer darker themes. Um, well, actually, I can't say that. Um, so, like, younger generations tend to prefer dark themes, and devs tend to prefer dark themes, right? So, like, my parents, they tend to prefer the light themes um, and, and stuff like that. But, like, um, you know, the younger generation that's on their phone a lot more, they tend to prefer um, dark themes. But that doesn't mean we should neglect the light themes, right? So um, making sure that things make sense in different themes is also an important thing to think about. Um, making sure it needs, yeah, oh, that's, yeah. Um, making sure that, um, that we're getting the right contrast too. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's the thing, right? Um, there's so much to do in the front end um, that you could specialize in like UI, um, like colors and styling and stuff like that um, and make a good career for yourself. Um, that's why we have UI designers, right? Um, and, you know, you could specialize in um, other parts of the UI um, and UI is becoming a very, very complicated thing. Um, and that's why, that's why things like um, analog are really compelling to me um, because they take a lot of the stuff that I have to think about out. I mean, they change. So one of the things that um, is interesting about analog, right, is in Angular, this would be a property on an object. Um, in analog, it's just a variable. Um, and so it changes the way you think about your code. So there, there is some difference there between analog and Angular. Um, but I'm undecided on, you know, how I, um, which I feel is better and how I feel about this approach. Um, so, um, I, the one thing I do love about analog is that, um, a template file with some HTML tags in it are valid, um, angular components. Um, that is just, that's amazing to me, right? Um, not having to add anything else. I don't have to add a component decorator. I don't have to add selectors. I don't have to add any of that. All I do is add template um, and add some markup and I'm off to the races and I can use that component in other Angular components. So um, um, I'm considering seeing if I can find a UI UX person on Fiverr. Yeah. And that may be the, a, a good way to go is find somebody who does it well. Um, but can those be separate files or is that the analog way? So the analog way is a single file. Um, and there is a lot of debate on the analog site about this. So if you want to go voice your opinion, go participate in their RFCs, um, go participate in their discussions. Um, and you could, you know, you could add discussions about it. Um, but the analog way is it's a single file, um, a single file component, right? Um, and that's another thing that we're um, we're working on at work too, because some part of the team we're, we're building a brand new project, right? And so we get to set some of the ground rules. Some part of the team likes single file components where the styles and the script, uh, you know, the styles and the template and everything's all in the component. Other people like multi, where the template and the um, style is outside of the component. The people. I, I find this interesting, but the people who tend to prefer single file components tend to write smaller components, right? Um, this tends to keep your template and your styles smaller. Um, the, the people who tend to prefer separate components will have like um, SCSS or CSS files with their components that are two or 300 lines long. Their components are, you know, two or 300 lines long. They're, um, their template is two or 300 lines long, right? They, they tend to like bigger things. Um, and so I tend to agree 
with the people on single file components because if you shove all of that into one component, it becomes very uncomfortable. And that's a good time to have a discussion about, well, can we refactor this, right? Um, so yeah, that's why I like Angular, the separation. I dislike the code plus HTML plus style stuff. Um, I'm going to stay mindful of this view. And so that's, uh, so, I'm lucky that um, I get to interact with people who have differing opinions from me because it forces me to reevaluate my opinion, right? I used to feel very strongly the way you do, um, TBD Gamer, that um, HTML and the code and the styles should all be in different places. Um, but then I got to interact with people um, who definitely differed from my opinion and who I respect. Um, and they were able to convince me um, that, you know, putting the template and the code together, like putting them in separate files isn't necessarily calling it separation of concerns, right? Um, sometimes hiding the template from your code makes it easier for you to hide the mistakes that you're making in the template. Um, and so um, I like to put I like to put the template and the code together. For me, putting styles in with the um, template and the code breaks my brain for whatever reason. Um, but I'm coming around to that too, um, and I'm getting better at it. Um, but for whatever reason, I like my CSS to be outside of my code and my template. Um, and so um, you know, everybody has their preferences too. And um, I'm not going to say which way is right, but what I am going to say is that um, I'm going to point out that the, the differences that I tend to notice between the two camps. Um, and if I look at the code that I wrote before I started putting template and code together, um, my components were much bigger. And that could be, part of that could be just the um, inexperience with Angular, right? Um, because you know, the, when I was doing that, it was it was further in the past, and you know, I've since learned different things and different strategies, and um, so I don't know. But yeah, um, I definitely need to end. I, I I've been saying that for a half hour, um, and you guys ask amazing questions right at the end. Um, I've got a long journey ahead of me. I don't know if you've seen what I'm working on. Uh, I haven't yet. Um, send it to me on Twitter. I'll take a look. Um, and built on the client. That's awesome. I'm excited to look at it. Send me a link. Um, DM me a link on Twitter. Are you following? Do you, do you follow me on Twitter? If not, um, um, you can send me a send me a DM on Twitter or LinkedIn. Um, either way, um, and send me that link, and I would be happy to take a look at it for you um, and give you some feedback. Um, yeah, thank you guys. I will see you all um, Sunday morning. Um, at 10 a.m. Mountain Time, um, where we'll pick up and we're going to start talking about um, facades and why you should do facades around um, different types of libraries. Um, and this is this has been driven home to me very very recently. Um, so I, I definitely want to talk to everybody about you know the importance of that. So um, yeah, join us Sunday. If not, it will be up on YouTube be up on Twitch um, and um, you guys can watch the replay. But thank you. Um, yeah. Thank you, TVD Gamer. You guys have a great